Whew, what a long day. What's up guys? In today's video, I'll be talking about a topic that comes up a lot when it comes to startups and it's a topic of co-founder conflict. And this was something that I was actually discussing with a friend of mine about why conflicts arise and what you can do about them and what the most common types of conflicts are between startup founders. So this is a topic I'll probably be touching upon in quite a few of my future videos, but I just thought why not make an introductory video about what co-founder conflicts are about, especially using this new camera and video road mic that I bought on sale. And yeah, might as well just take advantage of these resources and tell you guys more about a topic that is usually very emotional. I'm gonna try to break down the emotion behind co-founder conflicts that it's actually more important to find the right co-founder rather than to try to make things work with a co-founder who is not exactly compatible with you. And these opinions are all based on my personal experiences. One thing I'd actually like to talk about is the uh, concept of having a co-founder that is just not compatible with you on a work style basis. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that you guys just don't coordinate well. There is no synergy between the two of you, although you guys may work well together, as in there may be some execution taking place. You guys just don't really connect with each other. You guys aren't on the same wavelength. Now I know this is kind of uh, ambiguous to be honest, but let me give you a concrete example. Let's say you're someone who likes to communicate a lot, likes to bounce ideas off your co-founder. You would like to have someone provide that constant feedback, that constant criticism, that constant commentary over the ideas that are coming out of your head so that you can refine them. You're the kind of thinker who likes to throw out ideas and just talk about them and get someone else to try to refine them for you before you make the final refinements. Now, if you have a co-founder who's not that kind of person, if you have the a kind of co-founder who's more introverted, who likes to just keep things to himself, who likes to uh, keep ideas to him or herself and doesn't really like to give feedback on ideas that you throw out. There may be, I'm not saying there will be, but there may be an issue where you and him start miscommunicating. You guys start misunderstanding each other. From your perspective, it looks like this person's not interested, not engaged with the ideas that you're throwing out. And on the other hand, for the person who's more introverted, that co-founder, your co-founder might feel like you're just talking too much, you're providing too many ideas, and you aren't focusing on the operational execution of those ideas. And that is, it's like you talking over his head and him talking over your head or her, and that can create for a very frustrating situation. So if you have that kind of situation in your co-founder relationship, the best thing to do is to try to just air out those concerns, to try to tell your co-founder that you are experiencing a problem whereby you aren't getting what you need from him and maybe he or she might have the same problem as well. Airing concerns out clearly without holding anything back. That's what may salvage your co-founder relationship. Although I do really advocate for the approach where you're just, you just go out there and find a new co-founder, honestly, because again, you're gonna be working with this person for probably three, four, five years, unless you're comfortable with someone who just isn't really compatible with you on a work style basis, chances are you are not going to thrive in this co-founder relationship and that it is the best for the two of you to just go your separate ways and try to find new co-founders or to just not do the startup at all. When you're starting a startup, it's like keeping a piece of jello in your hand intact for days on end. And if you only have one pair of hands and you don't have that backup pair of hands to catch that jello, you're probably not going to succeed. And when it comes to incompatible work styles, where maybe your co-founder just isn't present to catch that jello, or your co-founder is too present and smooshes that jello, which I would call um, over-managing a certain process without having the natural insights take place, without having a natural development process where you take into account user feedback. That also, and that actually results in micromanagerialism, that also destroys the whole startup organic process. So those are really my thoughts right now on the uh, topic of co-founder conflict. I'll probably speak more about this topic in a future video, but right now I'm just gonna show you some of this footage that I took with my new Canon M50. To end this video, I'm just gonna show you guys a brief video montage 
of the footage I've been able to take of Soho and uh, Greenwich Village. So stay tuned for that guys. And thank you again for watching another one of my videos. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit subscribe and don't forget to like the video. And with this new camera, I've been thinking about filming more and that's probably what I'm going to do once I get used to this whole new setup. So thanks again guys and see you in the next video. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen.